Erin, and it's time for another Kuroko no Basuke episode review. Today I'm talking about episode 43, and I am going to finish this if it kills me. The universe doesn't want me to tell it to you about my Kuroko no Basuke feelings because the equipment stops working, my head stops working, and I actually wrote this when I had a major migraine, so it's totally possible that it's not going to be all fancy worded and stuff like that, but I want to talk to you guys about this episode because holy tit balls, New favorite episode of the season. How can I not talk to you guys about it? It was beautiful. It just had uh, empty feelings. So if you've been waiting to continue Kuroko no Basuke until the end of this map so that you can marathon it and not have to deal with those horrible, terrible, just the worst things in the world cliffhangers, hate them so much I'm still really bitter about all of them, now is your time as we have reached the conclusion of the Toho vs. Saren rematch. First awesome things first, Zone versus Zone. You guys, Zone Amine versus Zone Kagami. Freaking, uh, how, how amaze balls, all of the balls in the world amazing, was the first five minutes of this episode. If you say not at all, then get out. I swear that I forgot to breathe for most of it because the back and forth was just so good and intense. And the animation, the animation, production IG fudge nailed it. Because while the rest of the episode did look fantastic, these first few minutes were outstanding. From the eyes to the way the two aces moved around the other players. It was downright impressive animation and I give production IG all the props and all the fist bumps because it was a scene that deserved to look as good as it did. One of my favorite examples of the animation and just an example about how happy I am with how production IG has handled production of the series this season was Kagami's jump, which looked eerily similar to the jump he does in the first opening of this season, just from a different angle. A detail that I absolutely loved. I don't know if anybody else caught that, but I thought it was dope. I don't know if it was actually supposed to be a thing, but I thought it was pretty cool. BTW Sakurai's face when he randomly ends up with the ball during the battle of the two aces was just, mm, so great. The animation was not the only goosebump worthy part of the zone battle. We got Almine smiling and just looking so incredibly happy to be playing against Kagami. And when Kagami knocked away the ball from Almine and the Toho Ace fell over, my heart just stopped. It just stopped and fell into a puddle of <gasps> Kagami's line about how he would have lost to Almine if it had been a one-on-one -on -one reiterates how much growth he's had since the beginning of the series. Need I remind you that this is the same guy who once got punched by Kuroko for playing too selfishly and now here he is saying that he would have totally lost to Almine if it weren't for the motivation to win not just for himself but for Kuroko and his teammates. Bakagami is an angel you guys. Precious idiot of an angel. Saying that though, Almine did have to go be a show off and have what is definitely one of his most ridiculous baskets yet in this series. Throwing it over a backboard while he's falling out of bounds. I, I got nothing because it was ridiculous, but it was also very cool. As the game begins to reach its climax, Kuroko's misdirection overflow finally begins to wear off, making it difficult for Hyuga to make a three-pointer. But he manages to make a pass to Kagami, which Almine of course blocks before he's able to make it into the basket, and they have another one of their whole woo things in the air. Instead of attempting to fight Almine in an aerial battle, which past Kagami definitely would have had no hesitation doing. He finally completes his assignment from Riko and is able to use his left hand to make a pass to Kiyoshi, who, being the badass player he is, forces a foul while also making a basket, earning Saren two points and a free throw. Death was up, oh, baby, on her. With a one point difference between the two teams and only five seconds left in the game, Saren does not have enough energy left in them for overtime, meaning Kyoshi will be deliberately missing and whoever gets control of the rebound is the winner. Just remembering that gets my heart racing like a little hamster because every single second of this episode is a prime example about what makes Kuroko no Basuke such a fantastic sports anime. Because not only is it well written with charismatic characters and developed character relationships, it's just so much fun to watch and lose yourself in. From when Kiyoshi released the ball, to Kuroko's declaration that Kagami would be the one to catch his final pass, to Kagami's victory fist, I don't think I took a single breath because I was so engaged in what was happening. And then everybody started cheering and Saren looked so, so happy and Kuroko, you're smiling at me, I'm like, oh, it's so precious. And I lost it. Happy endings just make me so happy. And Almine's face when he realized that he lost was just so 
beautiful. Not because I want to see him all sorts of distraught, because I love Almina and that would be just mean. But the implications about what it means for Almina to lose makes the expression on his face and Momoi's tears that much more impactful. And let us not forget the most feels moment of the entire episode. Kroko, who has exhausted himself to the point where he can't even stand without Kagami's help, a totally precious light and shadow moment, BTW, finally, finally gets his fist bump from Almine and just tears, tears all over myself, tears all over my Kroko no Bosque mug, all over David, just ugly crying everywhere. I can't, this, I can't, this episode, I can't, you guys. It was just, it was perfect. It was a perfect episode. My hair agrees. My hair is not perfect. <laughs> and then after the credits, we have the Toho third years, Imayoshi and Susa, and I think some other people saying farewell to their team and their eyes are all red. I feel emotion. I feel the most awesome things. Most awesome things. The Saren locker room scene with the five sleeping though was just so adorable and cute. And I heard that that's an homage to a slam dunk scene. Don't actually know if that's fact, but if it is, that's pretty dope. So yes, episode 43 was definitely 1,000 Kurokos for sure. My favorite episode of the season so far, which I think is the case for a lot of you. The pacing of it was just so good. It never lagged, but it also didn't move so quickly that the focus on emotional scenes was lost. And like I said, it just encompassed everything that makes Kuroko no Basuke so wonderful. And finally, all of you anime-only viewers are going to find out who that mysterious pretty blonde lady in the opening is, and you're gonna fall in love just like I have fallen in love with her because she is my Kuroko no Basuke waifu. One of them. All of the ladies of Kuroko no Basuke are my waifu, and you can't tell me otherwise. Okay guys, that is it for my review of episode 43 of Kuroko no Basuke, aka the episode that induced all the feels that you never knew basketballs could induce. If you would like to watch Kuroko no Basuke as it airs ad-free in 1080p so you can get all of the fist bump and action in high death, then you can do so by clicking on a link in the description down below that will take you to a free 14-day trial of a Crunchyroll Premium Membership. It's pretty dope and fantastic, and you know you wanna. If you would like any more of my weirdness, feel free to follow me on any other social media site I have. Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, my anime list, Crunchyroll profile, Hummingbird, Instagram. I've been posting some pictures of drawings that I've been doing. I'm getting back into sketching. Woo, 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 be autistic and shit. So go ahead and follow me on any of those. I hope you're having a fantastic Kuroko no Basuke feeling filled day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh... <laughs>